No one starts a meeting off like the mayor starts a meeting off, right? In the true spirit of what takes place in Wallingford, um, the mayor just has called the meeting to order officially. So I want to thank you personally for, for being here tonight. Um, you know, tonight is about outcomes. Business is about outcomes. And we have listened to our business community. We've listened to our manufacturers in the town of Wallingford loud and clear many of whom are in the room uh, tonight. Matter of fact, manufacturers in the room would just stand up and if the rest of us could give them a round of applause. <laughs> These are the folks every single day when uh, we, we exist and, and enjoy life in the town of Wallingford that are creating things, creating jobs, making things that go all over the world. We were recognized a couple of years ago as Wallingford being the, uh, the number one exporter of products in the state of Connecticut. A lot of people, I've lived here my whole life, I didn't know that until I started this role. So we continually uh, listen to our businesses. There's great opportunities in manufacturing. There's great career opportunities, lots of jobs. And we want people to know what they make. We want people to get exposed to what they make. And, uh, and as a result, um, they fill jobs, we keep jobs, everybody's happy. So I just, I'm gonna introduce a couple of people and ask them to make some quick comments. And of course, it's the crescendo is when the, when the mayor is going to proclaim uh, Wallingford a STEM community. So and that's the culmination again of, of a lot of hard work. But first, I'm gonna ask uh, Joe Mira, who is ready, I can see, uh, to say a couple of words. I would just say that uh, those of you who don't know Joe, Joe, Joe is a powerhouse when it comes to workforce. Um, and he is, he's been involved with workforce development for over 30 years. He is the chairman of our Economic Development Commission here in Wallingford. Uh, he is on the board of directors of, of Workforce Alliance in New Haven. When it comes to jobs, when it comes to providing for generations, again, jobs, um, economies in our town, Joe is at the center of that. So please welcome and thank through your round of applause, Joe Mira. Not quite how we rehearsed, rehearsed that, Tim. You did all right. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I also chaired a hubcap, which is the facility we're in today, and I got to brag about the side walls here. These are uh, artwork done by the students of Sheen High School. And part of the function of hard, uh, hubcap is we uh, have it's available for the students. It's the main focus of hubcap. And uh, once a year, the, uh, there's a uh, art program. And parents come in in the evening, they view the art. And special offer, if you see something you like, you can make an offer, uh, they offer sale. So just a word to the wise. Okay, putting back to, the, to what we're here tonight. Um, as you know, most businesses when they're expanding and they relocate to Wallingford, Fit, yes, they know that we have a very attractive uh, electric rate. Uh, they know we're centrally located to the two major uh, market shares, Boston and New York. New York more than Boston, but that need to get to that. Uh, easy access to two major highways, airports, soon to be many rails. Uh, and now we're adding STEM education to our many list, uh, our list of many advantages to Wallingford. Uh, STEM is the new biz uh, buzzword in education uh, as jobs are moving increasingly more over to the fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. One out of four isn't bad, I can hear you <laughs> one. And um, these programs, among everything they do for students, they help with the soft skills, uh, which is needed in today's workforce. Uh, they help with the communications, problem solving, critical thinking, cre uh, creativity, data, analysis, and while if it's goal here tonight is to offer our students the STEM program so that they have the, school, the skills needed to compete in today's workplace and beyond. So I've got to give credit to Tim and Dr. Menzo uh, who spearheaded this program. Uh, they saw the need and that's one good thing and I'm not bragging, I didn't grow, I didn't grow up here, but I got to wave the flag. One good thing in Wallingford, if there's a problem out there, there's somebody that recognizes it, they find a solution. They don't stand on the street, uh, the curbs, and talk about it. 
they find a witness. And these two men did it, and I thank them. That's what we're here tonight for. And again, I have to thank our mayor. Once again, he's strong. With or without his bugle, he supports the program. He jumped right in. So I want to thank these three men for making this happen and uh, look forward to uh, supplying the workforce with our students in the weeks and months and years to come. Thank you. You know, another another uh, champion of workforce development and a champion of business is here tonight. It's Representative Craig Fishbein. There are um, I don't want to get political, but there are there are politicians who say they're workforce friendly and business friendly, and then those there are those who actually do something about it. And please welcome Craig Fishbein. Thank you. So I come from a background of manufacturing. My grandfather, now my, my uncle, um, owns a, a plastic injection molding factory here in Connecticut. And I actually worked there in the summers uh, when I was going through college. So you know, I do have that background in manufacturing. Um, the, um, one of the biggest things I hear at the Capitol and here locally is the lack of jobs that our manufacturers are able to uh, to fill uh, lots of openings and, and we don't have the, the skilled workers. So I want to thank the Board of Education. You know, I sit on the town council and as a state representative, I have nothing at all to do with what the Board of Education does. So I had nothing at all to do with this decision, but I fully support this decision. I want to thank the mayor for backing this and, and through Tim Ryan. But uh, you know, science, technology, and um, engineering and math is what it stands for that we're here today when actually it is saving the essence of manufacturing. That is what STEM stands for. So thank you very much, and I'm um, happy to be here. Thank you. And I noticed that State Representative Liz Lanahan is in the room. So Liz, would you come up and say a couple words? Sure, thank you. happy to be here today. Uh, a lot of you might know that my time at the Capitol has been spent working with manufacturers and in manufacturing and really working to fill that um, student to career pipeline. Uh, we know that luckily we have UTC as to who has just announced thousands of jobs. Electric Boat announced thousands of jobs a few months ago and that's going to make a difference here in Wallingford and, and, and um, in the supply chain. So we know that over the years when I've spoken to you, I've been told consistently, as Representative Fishbein mentioned, that you just don't have the people to fill the jobs. This helps more than anything. When we can prepare our students for the careers that are going to be open for them, there's no limit to what we can do. I know from speaking to some manufacturers that kids, if they're not college bound, but they go into manufacturing and they're given the opportunity to learn these things, uh, that they can make literally $60,000 a year with overtime in their first year. And that's without college debt. That is something not only important uh, to our students, but important to the economy as well. So uh, I, I don't know if some of the manufacturers here were at my student to manufacturer connection fair that I do at the Capitol every year. Uh, but what we do is we have manufacturers come in. We had dozens this year to um, show what they do to hundreds of students interested in manufacturing. Uh, and it keeps growing every year. And we'll continue to do that to make sure that we can introduce manufacturers to these kids and show them exactly what is available to them. The next step is going to be talking to parents and making sure that they understand that careers in manufacturing are not the careers that they believe they were 30, 40 years ago. Uh, we're also talking about high tech manufacturing and, and something really important uh, to know when we look at STEM careers and as we're training our kids. Connecticut's greatest uh, economic benefit is our skilled workforce, and we're going to continue to help them grow. Uh, and that's what's going to attract companies to come here, among other things. So I want to thank you, Dr. Winsor, for everything that you do. Uh, we've had some conversations about how important STEM is, but there are many people having the conversation, but only a few walking the walk. And you're doing that, and the BOE is doing that, and the mayor as well. So thank you to all of you. Thanks to this program, and I look forward to really seeing it again. Thanks so much. So 
I'm going to turn it over to uh, the person I refer to as the architect of this entire initiative, and that's our superintendent of schools, Dr. Salmanza. So um, every architect has a team that uh, he works with or she works with, and I'm very pleased to say that I have uh, an incredible team, and many of them are here today, and I just want to recognize them. Um, and I'm going to probably put one on the spot, uh, two on the spot to come up and say a few words in a minute. Uh, but first and foremost, our board chair, Roxanne McKay, um, who I'll give you a few minutes to think about coming up and saying a few words. So get, as a good teacher would do, I'm giving you an opportunity to prepare. So Roxanne, thank you so much for your support. Uh, we have Patty Purcell, one of our board members also, and Tammy Raccio, one of our board members. And um, this shows the support of Wallingford Board of Education. It's four o'clock in the afternoon um, on a Thursday, and we have three of our nine board members. Um, two others are in negotiations right now, otherwise they would be here. So we'd almost have to call a meeting um, if we were to have this event. Um, but that shows the support that I have, and most importantly, all of our students and staff and family have in our town. That is amazing. That, I know, keeps so many people coming to work every day, coming to send their students to our schools every day because they know they have a team of nine that are there to support them. So I just want to say thank you to them. Um, in addition, I have a couple of staff members that I do want to um, recognize also. We have Mr. Rob Covey, who is our Career Technical Education Coordinator. He's here, key to our, our role and responsibility. We have Jane, Gra uh, excuse me, not Jane Graves isn't here, excuse me. We have Kim McLaughlin, who's our Career uh, Center Specialist. Um, at our high school, we have career center specialists at both high schools working on internships, getting our students out um, at an early age, looking at mentorships, internships, job shadowing. So we're very fortunate. And last but certainly not least, we have Kate O'Donnell, who is our STEM coordinator um, in our district. Uh, Kate's role is to uh, work with uh, all the different areas, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, uh, we in Wallingford would like to add to that acronym a little bit. We like to take the E and also add to that E squared entrepreneurialism and mathematics really make that M squared for manufacturing. So we really think that and also add an A in there ultimately for R too. So we kind of get a little wordy so we kept it short. But um, with that said, uh, I do, again, these individuals, as well as Carrie Latour, our Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum, who's in another meeting at this time, um, have been so supportive of this opportunity. What I wanted to share with you a little today, just very briefly, are some next steps that we're moving forward with this summer that we hope you'll get excited about and you'll be hearing about um, as we go forward. So first of all, when we started this whole process, we had to come up with a problem statement. What was the problem that we're trying to address as a town? We subscribe in Wallingford Public Schools and now throughout the town of Wallingford to design thinking principles. Um, we actually have a curriculum that Kate and Rob um, were authors with a couple of our teachers that we sell nationally uh, to bring in revenue to the school district around design thinking. And so as that came through in our process of design thinking, we came up with a problem statement. The community of Wallingford needs a way to expand the awareness of and readiness for STEM careers to increase personal success in careers and community vitality. We felt that there was a need to really address this problem, not just from a student perspective, a parent perspective, an educator perspective, but a community perspective. So what we tried to do is enlist the idea of collective impact. Um, and some of you might know what collective impact means, but it means taking a collective group of people representing different constituents and really getting the biggest bang for your buck. Um, if you always see things through one set of lenses, you always will end up with the same solution. Nine out of ten times, research would show that if you get the same group of people together at the same time uh, around the same problem, they will admire it from every angle possible, and then they will leave the room either solving the problem or just coming up with a retreaded solution that they had in the past. But as soon as you start inter interjecting and introducing different variables, meaning different people with different perspectives, you get different solutions. So what we tried to do is bring together town government, economic development commission, school districts, students, parents, community agencies, and I'd like to recognize all of our community agencies. We have Youth and Social Services, SCOW, the town library, um, that are incredible partners. Uh, we also have partnerships with Boys and Girls Club and um, also the YMCA. They've always been at this table with us. They're committed <coughs> to making this a reality for our students and our community. Local businesses, 
as evidenced by so many of you here today, and colleges and universities. We have partnerships and we have membership on our steering committee from Quinnipiac University as well as Middlesex Community College. So we're very proud of those partnerships that are working with us in this, uh, in this direction. So first steps in town, uh, STEM Town launch. What we decided at our steering committee, and I'm gonna invite Kate if you don't mind coming up. Um, Kate isn't shy, so I knew I'd put her on the spot. Uh, the thing is that we decided in our uh, launch meeting, or our steering committee meeting, that we were gonna do a design challenge uh, for our students in kindergarten through eighth grade. It's been a special privilege of mine because I've been working with seven classrooms over the last 17 weeks um, on design thinking. And so it was natural that I was able to work with those students, but we wanted to get all students involved with this opportunity. So we pulled them together, and so our Spring District Design Challenge, and I don't know if you want to just quickly sure. describe what it was. So our goal was to get kids excited about STEM and design activities. So over the course of a week, we visited 10 schools, all the K-8 to schools, mornings and afternoons. We set up baby pools. And the design challenge was to take a six by six square of aluminum foil and to create a boat that would hold the most amount of weight possible. So they could talk about design, they worked in groups, they worked collaboratively, and then we floated the boats and we tested them out. So this was like every student in the school. So we went to the middle schools. All 800 kids designed boats and brought them out to the pools, and it was an amazing experience to really see their learning. There were a couple classes that had the opportunity to do it two times because they did it once at their school, then once with Dr. Menzo, and to see them work with younger students and apply their new learning about surface area, and weight distribution, and the conversations. We did it with pre-kindergarten all the way through grade eight. Were amazing to see these kids getting so excited about design thinking, about using their ideas from science and math and, and putting it all together to engineer. So I don't know if you want to talk about the summer. Yes, actually, before we go to the summer, would you mind reading off, just because we're videoing this, and this is going to go on our YouTube channel, the winners oh. of our design channel. So what we did was for each school, um, they worked as a class or they worked in groups in their class, and we wanted to announce the winners for each school and just recognize them um, as the ones that held the most amount, we use these large washers, um, held the most amount of weights. Um, so at Cook Hill School, it was Mrs. Sorrentino's class. At Parker Farms School, it was Mrs. Labrie's class. At Highland School, it was Mrs. Colonese. At Fritz, it was Mrs. Mezzi's class. At Pond Hill, Mrs. Parr's class. At Stevens, Mrs. Daddio's class. At DAG, it was uh, Mrs. Bergeron's homeroom class. Um, they had the record with 16 weights that they were able to hold on their little piece of tin foil. At Moran, it was Ms. Zolnick's enrichment class. At Moses Y Beach, we had a tie with 13 weights with Mrs. Farcash's class and Mrs. Dulek's class. And at Rock Hill, Mrs. McCormick's class tied DAG with 16 weights that they were able to hold. So we just wanted to make sure that we recognize those students in those classes for all of their hard work. Our goal next year um, that we've been working on, Kate, Rob, myself, working on trying to do design challenges K-12 three times a year. So stop, drop, and design uh, days where students will be given similar materials no matter if you're in kindergarten or if you're in 12th grade. And we want to have the challenge put out to all of them. Today we were going to put uh, myself and the mayor on the spot to do the challenge in front of you live. Uh, we decided, I decided, I didn't consult with the mayor so I apologize, but I decided that I'd spare all of you that um, opportunity. But if you'd like to see that at another, but another time, time. Another but time. We'll, we'll charge. Uh, <laughs> so again, these were some of the students, um, you know, again, the brainstorming sheet, trying to get them to think through it, coming with ideating solutions, which is so key in all that we hear going on in business. Um, and in all industries and all professions. So next step for our, temp, our STEM challenge, our STEM town launch for the public schools is our summer design challenge. So what, I, what I'm gonna be working on is designing a challenge a week. We're gonna be using a scavenger hunt app um, and we're gonna try to locate the design challenge at different businesses. <laughs> and community agencies and all, all different sorts of locations. So people would go to a certain location, they would do the design challenge, they would have to provide evidence in the form of a video or a picture or a prototype of something that they designed, um, and they would go through and do a challenge a week using the scavenger hunt app, 
And then at the end, there'll be a final challenge at our celebration day in August. Um, so we're still finalizing what the challenges are and what the locations are, but there'll be a website and the scavenger hunt app so people can go through and do the design challenges every week. And then we'll declare winners for each of the design challenges at the culminating event in August. And another layer and opportunity for our fifth grade students, which then will be rolling out in grades four through eight in the fall, is that we have a partnership, a business partnership with Check, uh, Tech Trap. Uh, Tech Trap is an online, uh, basically STEM program, which allows students to engage in up to 20 modules of different STEM activities, ranging from coding to 3D printing to animation, uh, graphic design, financial literacy. It puts this in the hands of the students um, it's a safe environment, so it's, it's based on Canvas, which is used at most universities for curriculum development, so it's not um, an ad-based environment, it's a structured environment, but it allows students to take a 10 weeks, a 10 section, session course to learn and have challenges along the way applying their new STEM learning. So what we're doing with our fifth graders, every fifth grader over the next two weeks, their family will receive an email. Um, which is a Google survey, selecting, having them select one of five courses that they would like to sign up to take over the summer. Free of charge, no cost, all you have to have is access to a computer. We have our partners in the room who are going to have the computers available and we're going to list them um, so that if a parent doesn't have access to Wi-Fi or a computer, they can go to SCOW, they can go to the Town Library, they can go to Boys and Girls Club, they can go to YMCA. So we want to make sure that there's equity because the key in everything that we do means that we have to not just have equal access, but equitable access. Equitable is a higher standard. We need to make sure we have that for all of our students because we can't have this become the haves and have nots of STEM learning. So that's very, as you can see, I got a little revved up there because that's a passion of ours in our Board of Ed. So the key thing is with this program, the students will have five different classes they could sign up for. What we're adding at the end is we're adding an additional challenge. And some of the challenges will include, for example, one of them is doing uh, music, uh, music overlay for um, video. So we're actually going to be creating a video um, highlighting our community's STEM opportunity as a STEM town. And then we're going to have the students in a competition create the background music, uh, mix the background music for that video. And that music will become the theme song for STEM town Wallingford. We also are going to have a logo competition as well as other competitions based off of this. And these students will come together in August with their families too to highlight their learning. Come this fall, as I said, every fourth through eighth grade student will have a free account um, that, and, and that actually no cost to the school district either um, for five years, but that's another story for another day. Uh, the thing is that um, they will have a free account to access up to the 20 um, different areas um, in the program. We are going to focus as a community uh, we'd like to consider focusing on a financial literacy one where parents and students will work on that one together um, through the use of this platform. So we're very excited about this. This is their first STEM Town launch that they've done as, a, uh, as an actual company. So we're working with them um, and uh, this actually came out of a uh, meeting online basically from a, a, a webinar that we were doing as a school district on our design thinking and the company reached out to us and we saw it as a great connection. So we're training facilitators next week uh, from all of our community partners and moving forward with this opportunity. And then we'll end with the summer celebration. And then coming attractions, I know that we have talked about that we want to really highlight our STEM Town initiative at Celebrate Wallingford, which is a phenomenal event that's um, facilitated by the one and only Liz Landau, who, where's Liz? Liz. Um, we could not do everything um, that we do as a community without Liz's support, especially through Hubcap. Um, so I just wanted to highlight those pieces of our journey um, that we have planned for our school district. This is a journey, and that's why I use that word journey, not a destination. Um, this needs to continue to be something on our agenda, and the mayor keeps bringing that up, that this can't be a program, it can't be an event, it can't be a day, it can't be something that we lose sight of. Um, as many of you know, 500,000 open jobs exist across the country in STEM fields. Connecticut alone has almost 30,000 of those jobs. Wallingford alone has close to 1,000 of those jobs, if not a little bit more, depending on the numbers that we get. So there is a need. 
I hate to use the word crisis because that's associated with so many other things that are, of course, in some instances, much more significant. However, it is a financial crisis that we face. And for selfish reasons, and I know Jay Shea, who is a former board member, um, knows, I say this, that if I can't keep the businesses in town with the help of everybody, we work, don't work collaboratively, we're gonna have a more difficult time supporting our educational system. And for selfish reasons, I want my students to have the best education system they could have. So that is why we're here today. But before I conclude my comments, I would like to call up, if she would like to, my board chair, Roxanne McKay, because without her support and her understanding of this, we couldn't do this. So I, I wasn't planning on speaking today, but he did put me on the spot. But I have a really unique day today. I started my day and I'm ending my day in a really positive way. I started my day at one of our elementary schools, Pond Hill, who um, just created an advanced and outdoor classroom um, with, that collaborated with the Wallingford Garden Club and um, a Hamden Middle School group of young men and women that built benches. Um, to actually put into out in this outdoor uh, learning center and today was in the ribbon cutting. So here I am now ending my day and I'm looking out and I see so many people from so many different components and aspects of our community and it tells me it's the same theme over and over and over again. This town is amazing in the collaboration and the willingness to help out the Board of Ed and our education system. You all recognize in this room the most important commodity we have is our youth. And the fact that you're here today, and many of you were in the Dream Design Do uh, exercise this past summer, um, and that got us to this point to a degree. Um, you know, you, you embody it. I'm, I am really, truly preaching to the choir here. But it would be uh, remiss of me if I didn't say thank you uh, for the continued commitment and the loyalty and the desire to work so collaboratively with our school district. And the number one person that steps up and stepped up in this opportunity was our mayor. Sorry, I was going for Joe Mayor. Was our mayor. He stepped right up because we kind of threw it in his face that when our dream design do uh, process of, let's do a proclamation. Mayor, will you do a proclamation? The poor man's like sitting there going, uh. And he stepped right up and said, absolutely. And recognized the importance of this commitment of our community and how it does place us a, a step above of everybody else. And of, and of course, Dr. Menzo is the most valuable resource we have in Wallingford. And it continues to shine over and over again. So I just want to say thank you so much for all of your commitment, energy, and interest in our students and in our community and this notion of a, of a STEM town. So thank you. I neglected to mention one other thing, and I apologize. Thank you, Roxanne, for yep. those comments. Um, and I would get fired from a nonprofit board that I don't get paid on. But from Hubcap, if I don't mention that, um, I want to mention Joe Mera. Um, and a variety of people in this room are working, and I just want to put this out there as a little seed idea. Um, we're working on a pipeline program, um, and it's really Joe's, um, Joe's brainchild. Um, I'm just helping him along the way and, and getting to use Google, which is fun. <laughs> um, so the thing is that we're working on a program where we would take students who recently graduated, as well as people who maybe are underemployed um, or are looking for a career change and offer them a 10 to 12 week program starting this fall where they can learn, first of all, identify whether or not they have math and uh, English language arts proficiency. If they don't, then we'll work through our adult education program to give them the courses to infill their mastery and proficiency. If they do, um, we'll have them take the Accuplacer test so they would be prepared to move on to a community college or other settings. In the process, we plan to do, um, with our help of Kim McLaughlin and her partner, Jane Graves, uh, work with them on uh, resume writing, interview skills, um, and then we want to do some safety course work with them, which Rob Covey, um, another member of the team I mentioned er earlier, will help with that. Lastly, we'd like to conclude with a series of events, these challenges for the adults in the room to have the businesses who are partners kind of in a fishbowl activity 
to watch the participants and see who they might want to interview. Um, and the last session would be an interview session with the candidates um, that have gone through the 10 to 12 week program. So we're very excited about this opportunity. Uh, we will look, be looking for everyone in this room to be a partner because we need to first of all get the participants. Um, secondly, get the businesses involved and the community involved. So I, I do have to say, Joe has such a passion and a fire about this that I cannot let that be um, dis extinguished. It has to happen for this person because Joe is an amazing person, but it has to most importantly happen for Wallingford. Um, because I think it could really help the many people in this room who are fighting to get positions filled um, in their businesses and maintaining their vitality in our community. Um, and we look to make move this beyond manufacturing. And we're working with Workforce Alliance who will help as well. So we're very fortunate. So I'll turn it back over to Tim, but I had to do that, you know how that was. Tim. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> so how lucky are we that, I, I don't know if any other community in the state of Connecticut or perhaps beyond, that the Economic Development Commission can help identify an issue at the, at the local businesses, job development, and engage to the level that we have, our Board of Education, to take and really wrap their arms around trying to do, take and prepare a future workforce for all of our manufacturers in this room. I think that's a significant stride. So, Sal, thank you very much for your energy, I don't know where it all comes from, but it never runs out. So, I'll also say while I was sitting here, I just did some quick, you know, back of the envelope math in my head, and the manufacturers that are represented in this room, I refer to them as the captains of industry. They represent some of the biggest manufacturers we have in this town, and if my math is correct, forgive me if it's off by a little bit, but upwards of 2,000 jobs in the town of Wallingford are represented by the people who are sitting here from our manufacturing force. So, that is a significant, significant economic benefit. We want to continue to work diligently to provide them with a workforce so that we can keep them operating in the town of Wallingford. Nothing happens, you know, a lot of things happen at the local level. Beyond that, you've met several of our state reps uh, earlier. We need great representation and great energies at the state level. Since I uh, was last up, I see Senator Fasano in the back of the room. I'm going to ask him to come up and address the group. Um, I will say that Senator Fasano has always made himself available. He has visited several of your businesses personally with me to discuss issues and challenges that you have in terms of regulation, in terms of workforce development. So these are the type of champions that we need on our side, and Senator Fasano has always been there for us. So with that, I just want to say just a, a couple of words. You know, a couple of years back, I did a business tour throughout the entire state of Connecticut and met with a bunch of businesses. And the big thing that came apparent is the lack of kids who have knowledge or young adults with STEM and the inability to fill those jobs with kids coming either out of our high school or out of our college. And that was amazing to me that everybody in the United States looks to Connecticut, Northeast, but Connecticut in particular, for having the most educated population. But yet we can't fill these jobs. And about five or six years ago, Sal and I were talking, and Joe, and they invited me to a meeting where they had businesses there. And they're developing a curriculum which tied into education that put kids who may not want to go to college, not because of aptitude, but it's just not their thing. They either have other obligations or what have you, and they just want to start in the workforce. But they were starting at a low wage. And they talked about working with Tim at EDC and working with the community in a town that, thanks to this mayor, has a wonderful tax base, a cell phone, electrical grid, which allows manufacturing to explode in Wallingford. And they recognized that opportunity and said, now we have to give them a workforce. And five or six years ago, said, I don't have the answers. I'm going to talk to the business community, get together, put together a curriculum so that the kids will know what they need to do. Everywhere I go, in fact, even yesterday, I was in New Haven with the Greater New Haven Chamber. And I speak 
praise of the town of Wallingford with the Board of Education, the government that we had, the town council, the mayor, the Economic Development Commission, how they work together to solve a problem. And this is a model that we have to take to the state. This is a model that works well and will get kids employed that we have to bring to our cities. That's how we're going to move this state forward. Just very quickly, quick story. When Governor Scott from Florida came up to poach some jobs about three years ago, I, my staff teased me, so they said I went incognito. I took off my tie and jacket and I went to the meeting. That's why I was incognito as I went. And I listened to what he said. And the manufacturer said, okay, you know, I get Florida's great, but tell me what you're going to do for me. And he explained, I'll find a piece of property, I'll get it zoned. But what I'm going to do is you're going to give me the curriculum of what you want, from bookkeepers <coughs> to accounting to uh, tools to uh, computer robotics, whatever you want. And I'm going to stick that curriculum in our high schools, in our community schools. I'm going to give you a conveyor belt of employees that you get to pick from. And they all were marveled at a very simple idea. Well, that's what we're doing here. And what's terrific in this community, which is the tightest community I certainly know of, at all levels, that works so well together, we are making, we, you are making a difference in this town with these kids. And it's going to take a while for that to make its way across, but it will. So I congratulate all of you on just a terrific job, all working together to solve a problem. And I'm going to turn over to representatives for a proclamation. This, uh, that's why he's in the Senate, isn't that great? <laughs> uh, this is from the General Assembly, an official citation from Senator Pisano, Representative Candeloro, myself, Representative Mishinsky, and Representative Lanahan. Be it hereby known to all, the Connecticut General Assembly offers its sincerest congratulations to the town of Wallingford for its STEM town designation and partnership. In recognition of the Town of Wallingford's designation as a STEM community and its commitment and partnership to the advancement of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics learning with educators, students, businesses, and community leaders. Increased public awareness and understanding of STEM furthers Wallingford's commitment to preparing our students for future workforce needs and molds them into the next generation of professionals and entrepreneurs. Congratulations, Wallingford. The entire membership extends its very best wishes on this memorable occasion and expresses the hope for continued success, stated this 31st day of May 2018 in the State Capitol. Commission and I feel very fortunate to work alongside. We know Joe Mira, he is our chair and has been the chair for quite some time. I have Mark Jingris is in the room, Mark say hello, Gary Fabiano, Patricia Simbola, who else is back there? Uh, can't see. Oh, Rob Fritz, you're behind the camera. Say hello to Rob Fritz. So this is a commission of um, business owners in town. This is a commission of, of residents that volunteered their time just because they love Wallingford and they want to see Wallingford to continue to prosper. So please join me in giving them a hand and thank you. All right, it feels as if I should do a drum roll at this point, but I will say very briefly that nothing, none of this happens without great leadership at Town Hall, without fantastic support from our mayor. Uh, the second longest seated mayor in the state of Connecticut and here in Wallingford, we have no reason to, to wonder why. Uh, we, we truly appreciate his support. I introduce to you the mayor of Wallingford. <laughs> you all take the credit. It takes everyone working to make things happen. But I, at this point, there are two things about this designation one is appreciation. 
And I think it's an expression of appreciation for those who make, make the goods, make, make the materials that we depend upon every day. And I want them to stand up and just say who they are. Here's Newport, right? Uh, 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 down the street. street. All right. All right. Uh, Jay Chet. And how about some other companies? Stand up and introduce who you are. Vic USA. Vic. Uh, Hobson and Monster. Hobson and Monster. r and Precision. Uh, Doug Adams, Newcore Steel. Newcore. <laughs> Quality Engineering. APS Technologies. All next. All next. All Chrome. All Chrome. And I think we have uh, Connecticut Hyperdermics back there. Connecticut Hyperdermics. <laughs> <laughs> I know that because I carried a six foot needle to a, a, a elementary school on a career day. Okay. And uh, it did, it did uh, encourage some interest. <laughs> oh, sorry. But appreciation. We appreciate what you people do every day to make our lives easier and provide us with the products we really need. The second part of this is obviously what we truly have also expressed, and that is preparing our students for an appreciation and the mental awareness and readiness to deal with careers that are so vital. Manufacturing, so STEM, all about appreciation and encouraging young people to want to emulate those who show that creativity and ability to manufacture. So I do have a proclamation and it reads, whereas the town of Wallingford is proud to recognize the collaborative efforts of the Wallingford Board of Education, the Wallingford Economic Development Commission, and other town departments in response to the growing needs of our business partners in need of qualified workforces with recognized skills in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics STEM. And whereas we further recognize all those who endeavor to create awareness and effectively prepare our students and townspeople for career opportunities available to each for the overall betterment of our community, and whereas new STEM programs are being planned for students to explore. The STEM campaign is scheduled to begin next week with a townwide design competition for students in grades K through eight. Now therefore I, the mayor, do hereby proclaim town of Wallingford as a STEM community <laughs> and ask our citizens to support this program and to work with us as we provide additional learning and career opportunities for our students. And by this pen, I will now sign it. <laughs> Tim, and you and you and the superintendent here, I will turn this over to two people who are absolutely <laughs> hand in glove, critical to all of this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, I want to thank you all very much for coming. You know, from time to time, you always wonder whether we're on the right track when we're out there pushing hard every single day, but this type of support is motivating to all of us that are involved in this initiative and it, it, it'll keep us driving. So our job is to give kids great opportunities. Our job is to give employers, employees, and uh, I think we all benefit as a community when that happens. So thanks for being here. Have a good night.